Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 18. Last time we established the name, the club, Disco Elysium. It has happened. We got, we got dances happening. The best dances, only the best dances and anodic dance music in this establishment. And we're still in here talking to our Motley crew. We've got stuff to do where we've still got to help Suna uh, with her project. We've got to check up with her as the Ravers have now moved in. Eventually, we'll find a tape with a melody for Egghead. But we've got to talk to... We've actually got to talk to Egghead. Uh, uh, talk to Egghead. Talk to Suna. Run through more options with these gentlemen. And there's, there's more dialogue options to run through. And we are getting closer and closer to the end of the day. We're almost at 10 p.m. So we're almost going to be free to read through our case files. And uh, while we're at that as well, we'll also check over our badge with Kim uh, as well. So we're going to talk to people first um, and get that out of the way. Um... Last episode, we also bought a board game. We bought uh, the Wirral board game for 25 real. Uh, was it worth it? We will have to find out. I am not sure at this current point in time. Um, we will really just have to, really just have to wait and see. Um, now, thought cabinet, by the way, is we have many, and we haven't thought about something in a while. We do have a couple of skill points, so um, currently our bonuses from thoughts are not the best. Um, we've got a pain threshold increase, but hand-eye coordination authority and visual calculus are on a minus one. Um, however, however, the bonuses that are not related to our stats are quite good. They are quite good. Um, what I find interesting about this, the volumetric shit compressor, um, it raises the learning cap for endurance to four and all endurance white checks are unlocked. Um, I feel like we could maybe even forget that thought now. We don't really need to have our shit together. So I'm going to actually forget a thought for the very first time. Now it said, oh, there we go. I haven't checked this before. This answers my question, which was I was going to talk about. I was going to say I'm not sure if the thought will be able to be rethunk about, rethought about. Uh, it does not just go back into your thought cabinet. It's gone forever. There you go. Okay, so if we are removing a thought, it's gone. So if I... Yeah. I'm going to actually commit to removing a thought for the first time. So um, all endurance white checks unlocked already happened endurance check uh lifted to four it's currently at a two we're not going to be pushing to that anytime soon we can increase it via other means so instead of spending a skill point to unlock something i will i will just continue to have an open thought right now um and i think i'm trying to th i'm thinking i'm thinking i've had a little bit of a think about some stuff um this one's actually a quick one wompty dompty dom center it feels very bizarre, but I think it might be, I think it might be art cop, kind of cool art cop related. That's kind of with my thing, especially, and then hardcore aesthetic as well also feels interesting. Literally, the litany of contact mic 15 minutes also interests me. Um, I wonder if, you know, a shorter research time means not very good rewards, however. We'll just have to see how we go. Uh, because we've got a lot of thoughts, and I can only think of, you know, some. I can only think so many thoughts. So I'm actually going to internalize Wompty Dompty Dom Center. Uh, 42 minutes. Minus two on suggest. Uh, minus two on. No. We will. Um, oh, no. Okay, that's fine. For some reason, I read. I thought we already had minus one to suggestion because I looked here and then I looked there and went okay so minus two suggestion but then I just realized that's the minus one suggestion <laughs> that goes over there so we're at minus one suggestion in the meantime uh, and I think in our inventory we're also at another minus one suggestion so if I go in here I think our suggestion is going to be it's a three our volition's also low 
Now, Psyche stuff is actually... I'm letting myself down on my Psyche level, I think. Even my visual calculus is suffering, so... Uh, we do have clothes that do increase our suggestion. So, that could be a way to combat that sort of stuff, because... Suggestion's good when it, when it pops up, you know? Minus one empathy, but plus one to volition and pain threshold is decent. Now, this is also minus one to suggestion on this shirt, but we also get extra conceptualization. It's, it's hard to win sometimes. Uh, rhetoric, logic, physical instrument. I think I'm going to put the armor on for pain threshold and volition. A little less empathetic, however. Um, it is hard to make certain choices sometimes with, uh, with what you want. Our gloves have extra half-light. Two encyclopedia, minus one on perception. Our perception's currently on a plus one. So I think we can actually bear to go through that. We'll keep the inland imp we'll keep the horrific necktie on. Oh, I don't know I don't know if I want to take my perception down even more. And perception boots are good. Alright. Composure genes are kind of like our best genes, really. Kind of in my opinion. There we go. We've redressed. So now in total, our suggestion can still be five, which is good. Our volition up a little bit. We're not very empathetic here. We need to put some points in there, but we're close to a level up. So I'm, I'm going to put some, I'm going to bump my empathy back up to three. I can't have everything high, you know, but the th it's, it's funny that at this point in time, when I look at my chart, what's higher and what isn't, you know, I would have expected my intellect and psych to, uh, to be higher up at this point. It's all on me though, naturally, because look how, I'm more so on average, my motorics are actually doing quite well and I'm not even on speed right now. <laughs> uh, it's just the way of how things have worked out, I suppose, but we're almost uh, leveled up again, so we'll have more, some more skill points. Let's check in with Egghead first. Good morning, comrade! Yeah! Oh, actually, we did already speak to Egghead. Um, we just need to we'll speak to him when we have the tape. We need to speak to a cell. She's whistling. That's the one. Her trusty contact mic attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds traveling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? But like, underwater inside a tree. Underwater inside a tree, innit? And yes, I'm being more like Contact Michael, right? <laughs> Don't even bring it up. Should I say I wasn't going to, but Contact Mike is... Okay, fine. I was say I wasn't going to. No, no. I actually wanted to thank you. For getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new... Associates, such as they are. Nice. I think we'll be able to get more of us out of a cell now uh, because we've done this. So, how's everyone doing? Good, I think. Noid is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's been keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Sauna, the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much, and the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. Now, can you tell me about your associates? Sure. You helped us out. I can repay the favour. What do you want to know? Nice. And she can tell us about Suna and Tiago. Tell me about Suna. Ah, oh, she's a bit odd, I have to say. Doesn't talk much. I'm not really sure how to vibe with her, you know? Seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. But earlier today, she told me about... Welkins? And she seemed oddly happy, like she had some idea with those little creatures. Some artistic idea. I didn't really listen, I was busy with my mic. What about Tiago? Oh, the crab man. Still gives me the creeps the way he moves. But he doesn't actually come down that much, just climbs around the rafters. I just tried to stay away from the crab man. 
but he talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. Noid and the Crab Man, Tiago is sinking their signs. Oh, he talks to Noid, what for? Beats me. Noid said they get along somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do, yell up at the tower? He won't even hear you. Thanks, about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Andre. Andre? He's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but he is. To me, at least. You like him, obviously. He takes care of shit. Sorry. I mean, he's got a vision. For what life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's an organiser. I can agree with that. He's uh, He's got ambition. And hopefully that ambition is uh, even clearer without the influence of, uh, of speed. What is he organised? Nothing. <laughs> but then again, there's nothing to organise around here either. He really wants this church thing to work. His heart's in the right place. Must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. I don't know where he got that from. Andre's not super intelligent. I've never seen him so psyched about anything though. And he's often psyched. Looks sort of desperate, like it's his last chance or something. Or maybe he was just high. I feel like it means a lot to him. I mean, not that he does drugs, just high, you know. <laughs> not that he does drugs. Relax, girl, we're police officers, but we're corrupt, rotten to the marrow. You can tell us about drugs and shit. I don't give fuck. Um, just high, you know, on life. Uh, yes. <laughs> anyway. Could it be that he's balding, him thinking it's his last chance? Come to think of it, yes. We can talk about it with a cell, but never... Never confront a bold man about his boldness to his face unless you tell him he's a gorgeous hunk of bold man. Just some advice. This is the first time you've heard her laugh. He's in some kind of a self-destruction mode with that hair of his. Bleaching it like that. Probably wants to get rid of it altogether. Is Andre your boyfriend? Yes. Cute. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Noid. Tell me about the signs and Noid. He's a four-burger, I guess, like the rest of us. Okay, maybe not Egg, I don't know about him, but... Noid and the rest are from Fulberg, making the pilgrimage up north to visit the Palisseum. He's real hardcore about the lifestyle. Hardcore! Yeah! <laughs> I think the, the phrase hardcore is now forever attached to this game. And any time I'm going to hear that phrase, I'm I'm going to be taken back to this game. And I'm grateful for that. <laughs> That's truly hardcore. What does he do? What do you mean, do? Like, for a living? <laughs> no, I meant for breakfast. Yes. He's a carpenter. Trained and all. He's very good. He just doesn't have the mindset to work like that. In a shop somewhere. That's because Noid is violently hardcore. I have internalized it. I understand why he doesn't stoop to servitude, do you? Wow, you really have talked to him. <laughs> Indeed. Noid serves no master but the beat. And you? Sir, I abide by the law. <laughs> A strange feeling. <coughs> Every now and then, something feels off about the way she speaks. She doesn't change tone, but you feel as though there's more about her than she lets on. Ooh. What is this pilgrimage you're talking about? It's just something poor Fulberg kids do every spring. To pass the time, we walk the entire length of Boogie Street, up to Jamrock. Or as much as possible. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know, man. Have you been down Boogie Street? It's a little bewildering. Let's say I haven't been down Boogie Street. Okay. Then you should go and take a look, I guess. Boogie Street is cool. It's got a lot of immigrants and all kinds of different people. I might just do that if I make it there alive. Yeah. I hope you do. Thank you. Actually, tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? What's the deal with Egghead? What do you mean? Uh, what do you think he's doing when he yells all that stuff? Oh, that. He's the party boy. He told me as much, but what exactly is a party boy? A nod at music doesn't really do vocals in the traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. That's to say they're a bit backward. No offence if you like rock music, though. Rock music's called by me. Mm-hmm. Pachoo, pachoo. Swish. Your credentials as the resident future man of Revachon are being questioned. 
Show her your hip with the times, Gramps. Goddamn right. Rock music is the coolest. Rock music forever. Hardcore. You don't have to tell me rock is backward. I am the future man. I abandoned rock in the 30s, stupid rock. Goddamn right. Rock music is the coolest. Rock music forever. Yeah. Yes, forever. And ever. Anyway, even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. Yeah. He basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. I understand. People are usually afraid to do things if others aren't already doing them. Dancing makes you dance, like sneezing makes you sneeze, or yawning makes you... Humanity is really interesting, isn't it? We... We're, we're, we're quite... We're quite sheepish. We, we follow each other's lead. There are people who make the first move in an applause. People who make the first move in a dance. Yawning is contagious. Sneezing, just like this is mentioned, it's like when other people are dancing, when other people are doing something, you don't feel that societal pressure or you don't feel weird about doing it or being the odd one out or being the one that gets noticed. You can blend in with the crowd, you can do what everyone else is doing and everything feels fine. It's, you know, humanity is very interesting. We're very, very into mimicry with, uh, with one another sometimes. Uh... Anyway. No, Kim. That was a good interjection. I'll pat you on the back. That was nice. Where's he from? How long has he been with you guys? Actually, we don't know where he's from. Or who he is, really. Mystery. One time we were <coughs> partying somewhere in Backwater Forburg. Or maybe even Coal City. I can't remember. Maybe it was Coal City. You haven't got your city straight. You haven't got your story or your city straight, miss. The worst of the battlers. A wretched heap of closed down mines, even west of Jemra, on the dusty slope of Montmartre, the remotest possible area of Revachon. No one even wants to exploit those people anymore. Egg was yelling along to some jam someone was spinning, all night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. When the sun came up over the mines, there were mines? Yeah, it was in Coal City. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puppy dog sound all the way back. Couldn't even speak. It was definitely Coal City, because it took us two days to walk back to the fort. He just wheezed the whole way. <laughs> we never really asked why he came with us, or who he was. I think his name is Jermaine. There it is. People are sweet. <laughs> you can see it must have been a great night. The memory causes her to go silent for a moment or two. You wish you'd been there. Cute. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Actually, do tell me about yourself. There we go. Also, I'm going to take a quick mention. While we're being a detective and asking questions and getting cool stuff, I have something to, uh, that I'm going to show you real quick. So, we've got... We've got... i got a cool little jumper. i got my detective jumper on. Uh, gives me a... Because um, we can only choose two. And it gives me a... Plus one on drama. Dress uh, description is dressed theatrical, or instead of plus one drama, an attraction to the theatrical. Yeah, very dramatic. And then I feel like it would also give us a <laughs> give us a minus one to authority, at least for the Batman movie. Do you know who I am? That scene at the bar is like, I don't, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're not getting in. <laughs> Minus one to authority, do you know who I am? And plus one to drama. Theatrically competent. <laughs> as much as, it, like, it would fit with so much others. Like, you could do another one that is uh, encyclopedia. Minus one encyclopedia. Um, not good with, not good, uh, not bilingual is what I would say. Not bilingual. <laughs> Uh, there's there's many that you could do, but I'm wearing my detective jumper today. Um, do tell me about yourself. Me? Again? Yeah, I forgot. Tell me about yourself. I told you, I'm a silver bird. We need more than that, though. There's that phrase again. Really reminds you of something. What does that mean? It means I don't answer questions about myself. There's more to you than, I, than you let on. What am I not seeing? All right. 
She picks up the tape recorder and looks you in the eye. There is. Okay. Hmm. I don't want to do the authority option, I, but I do want to know more about her. Fair enough. Thank you. She just doesn't want to answer. We won't make her uncomfortable. Thank you. Some other questions. Sure. Ooh. Okay, hang on. Reaction speed. Legendary. Catch the silver bird. Our reaction speed... Our reaction speed's at a four. Now, it's a white check, so hold on. Do we have reaction speed related clothing? I don't think we do. I think the only reaction speed clothing we have is minus. I don't think we have a plus reaction speed. So we might have to do some coke. <laughs> or we could try this really low percentage and retry it again later. Yeah, damn. Um, reaction speed at a four. Welcome back. Catch the silver bird, 17% chance. Even asking all of that information and all of that stuff hasn't given us any pluses to assist with this one. Let's try it, and then I guess at some point I can put a point into reaction speed and we can, we can come back and try again. Or, 17%. So you're saying there's a chance? The silver bird has already flown away. I will catch it later. Not a chance. We got 19 out of 14. Okay. We will we will catch that silver bird yet. Alright, let's speak to Suna. Yes, what is it? She doesn't look up from the keyboard. How's the project going? I see that your neighbors have moved in, but all I hear is anodic dance music. What? What, what? did you say? I said, how's the project going? I can't hear you. The music is too loud. The project. How's it going? Oh, the project. It's not going well. Why? There's that guy. I need him to plug a 3.5 cable into the auxiliary input so that I can route the audio signal to the mixer into the speakers. I love that we heard it, but we're just like, sorry, can you repeat that? Egghead! A 3.5 cable! Into the auxiliary input! Okay? Why don't you just ask him? A place to be, apparently. I'll speak to him. I'll see what I can do. Thanks. Maybe you can get through his magic rhymes. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Yo, fam. Give me the orcs. Good We've got silence to play. Yeah. We've got Good silence to play. There's a meme there. Of, uh... <laughs> Yo, hand me the orcs. You better not play trash. Plays the deafening silence from the swallow. Egg, can you please route Suna's signal through your speakers? Tell's a mega! Yeah! I can route it through auxiliary! What kind of a cable does she use? 3.5 or 4.5? It's 3.5, no doubt about it. It's on the ground. Oh, she uses 3.5. Yeah. The auxiliary lining is 4.5 millimeter. These two don't mix. Oh no, we're going to be in this church forever. <laughs> don't worry, I have an adapter for it right here. Thank you. Hang on, this is a 4.5. We're all good, people! <laughs> uh, with a grin, he sticks the plug into the auxiliary lining. You hear a satisfying click. Whoa, thank God. That does noticeably degrade the sound quality. Great! Someone got through to him! Okay, let's get it all set up. Can we turn the music off, please? Egg, the music? Everybody! Don't panic! I'm going to turn off the Arno for just a sec for a special scheduled event. <laughs> the Arno will be back, but we're doing something else for one moment. 
All right, go tell her that Egghead is ready to rave to her tunes, and then I'll turn off the music. All right. Nice. Before we turn off the music, I just have to quick take a quick little break, and then we'll resume. All right, let us proceed with the experiment. It is time. Yes, what is it? All right, I talked to Ed Egghead. He plugged in the cable. You can now unmute your speakers. Okay, but think you can ask him to turn the volume down a bit? Just in case. Maximum! Shouts Egghead, a great smile still adorning his face, larger than a red dwarf star. Maximum is the only way! I know, I know it is, but could you please turn it down just this instance? Just this one time? Maximum is not the only way, okay? Pump it to the brick! Pump it to the hard master! There's no other way! Glue style! Glue style! Glue style? Okay, there literally is no other way. The mixing desk is glued to Maximum. <laughs> See? He pumps it to the hard master. It's hopeless. I think what Egghead is trying to say here is that the volume button is stuck on Maximum. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Ray of sound! <laughs> Never mind then. Let's get on with our project. I'm going to unmute the speakers on account of five. Everyone ready? Here we go. Are we about to hear something? Egghead pumps his hand up in the air, waiting for the beat to drop. The anticipation. All ready. 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 I'm ready if you two are detectives. The lieutenant nods stoically. Not so stoically. His hand moves to the gun holster. It's, it's sound, Kim. You cannot shoot sound. Suddenly, your palms are sweaty. The church seems cold and large. And my... And my knees. Spagoogie. Hold on for a moment. Uh, ready, let's go. Five. Okay, there's a countdown. I, I was getting... I was settling in. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. You disengaged. No wind outside. No waves. No floorboards creaking. Total continuous silence. This is unnatural. The woman looks around. In the silence, you see dust move on the floorboards. The driver of the speaker vibrates in the air and then stops. Plasterwork begins to crumble down the walls. In the silence, a low hum starts creeping up your spine. It's a song inside you, not in the speakers, not in the room. A great bass sigh in the basement of your mind. Slowly, it builds until the air around you starts to vibrate. It's out there now. In the world, made manifest. It will devour everything. The floorboards, the glass, the streets and the people. Nothing will remain. Guys, what's going on? There's alarm in the man's voice as he steps back to scan the surroundings. A slight rattle like crystal clattering in the cupboard fills the air, joining the chorus. It's getting louder! Says Noid, his eyes riveted on the strange circle of water basins. In the basins, the water looks like it's boiling. Hosiana! Mother of Mega! You hear Egghead yell, then something else, but his voice is growing faint. Hey, uh, what's that weird rattling sound? The beauty and the beat! The future of dance! Planetary! No, Egg! It's the window! The glass shards around Dolores Day's vacant heart appear to be vibrating from the sound. It almost looks as if she's alive. In the corner of your eye, the lieutenant steps aside, cautiously. 
his eyes searching for a possible evacuation route. The window is going to come down. No, the roof! She looks up. A screech fills the air. A scream of wooden nails. The pillars of the church twist and creak above and around you. Cracks appear on the stained glass window. Cracks run up the wooden pillars in the dark. Come down to us! Love! Below it, all the base grows. Like the jaws of a giant compressor gnawing on metal and wood. It does not sound benevolent at all. A great pulse arises in your flesh. That's it. I'm muting it. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. Start tapping your foot. Yeah, we should stop. Soon and mute it. Everybody, don't panic. It's beautiful. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. Oh, I want to feel the heat with somebody. Shit. It doesn't stop. The Have, woman you? Have you? Yes. I've turned it off. She yells, holding the contact mic in her hand. Andre, pull the compressor. The place is going to come down. I've bypassed the compressor. Fuck. I can't shut it up. The signal's passed. It's not in here. It's... In the mixing desk now, building into a positive feedback loop. This is it. A great roar. The vault of the roof twists above you. Glass shatters somewhere near the door. It's coming down. It's in the desk or whatever you do. Don't stop it. All right, we got it. I, uh, it. Do we let it happen or do we stop it? Egghead, it's in the desk. And then it stops, totally and utterly, as if there never was a sound. Only <coughs> your ears still ring from the shock. Everybody is staring at Egghead holding a dangling cable in his hand. A black three-pin connector. Egg. I pulled the plug. It was getting too hardcore. Too hardcore? You did good, Egg. Most of the place seems to be intact. Fucking hell. Programmer lady, tell me you were recording that. Dude. Four years. Twenty-two People, millions of reals. All that time, this is what we were up against. Just erased it. Suliswolf isn't gonna believe this. Yeah, but did you record it though? It was dope. I think we can use it. Yes, Andre. I recorded it. Damn, I, I need to send some letters now. Thank you all for doing this. Eggman, you too. And you, officer. I don't know what we've discovered, but I know what it sounds like now. That's the start. Could be. Is this. I wonder if this is related to the pale in, in some way, shape, or form, like the sound of the pale or something that we've captured within this church that was about to just literally crash and burn around us. My god. Kim. Did you hear that? It was very hard not to. I think you're right. There is something going on here. And you need to be very careful with it. I always like it when we can get Kim to admit something's going on. I promise, officer. We will not play it again. What was that? I've never heard anything like that. It was mathematical information from the anomaly presented as a waveform. Uh, yeah. That's what it was technically. Hmm. Theoretically... She shakes her head. Okay. Math in sound. I have no idea. I've never even heard of anything like this. A voice seems muffled in the silent church. It's your ears adjusting after the exposure. You're going to write Suliswaf? Yes, our lead designer. And maybe some of the producers too. And some of the writers. If they're sober enough to open a transmission. They need to hear. What about all the artists? What about all the artists? They need to hear too, don't they? They need to hear about this. Don't worry, I won't send the recording. Although I doubt they have the speakers to produce the frequency anyway. What happens now? Uh, are you going to... Stay here. I'm going to stay here with these lunatics. Send letters, maybe meet Suliswolf. Also devise further measurements. Nice. Yeah, hardcore. I want you to know that's totally chill with us. 
I don't care, but <laughs> thank you anyway. That's the best she can manage for Andre. It's quite a lot in truth. For her, at least. Now, I have a theory to come up with. Some <coughs> kind of preliminary explanation to all this. Or the letter will sound like I've lost my mind. Yes, and we have to get back to stabilizing Martinez. Instead of demolishing it with loud bass noise of unknown origins. Ask him. Some tiny hard thing lets go in your stomach. You're still alive. God damn. You have an explanation for all this. Somewhere deep in you, you know. The person you were knows. A, a godly logic check? Heard of the doomed commercial area, investigated it, heard of motorway south. Why can't I see the top of this anymore? Get, give me the full thing. Head of motorway south, cop of the apocalypse. Nice. 72% and we can retry it with logic. You know what I'm going to do? Just in case. I'm going to put all my lo- I'm going to- 72% is not high enough for me with my chances of failure. So <laughs> I'm going to put my most logical uh, clothing on right now. Um, and then I will try. Logic shirt. Logic hat. Actually, we have a better logic hat. Um... That's definitely going to be enough. That'll put us in like the 90%. Logic glasses. Can never have too much logic. Can you... Is it possible to get like 100% on a check? This... With the amount of logic points, plus 5 logic, we could be... F they're so logical. Surely this has to be 100%. I can't... Click on... Oh, I can't do anything. Oh, because I have to do the sound first. I have to do the thought. Humpty Dumpty Dum Center. You're at home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Oh. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sprezzatura and sparkling wine. And, let's be honest, tax evasion schemes. The Wompty Dumpty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Me misunderstanding, thinking it would bring me closer to the art cop, but it actually made me hate them. <laughs> Bonuses. Encyclopedia passives gives... Oh, dude. Encyclopedia passives give plus 10 XP and plus 2 real. Yet money as well and minus 2 suggestion. Pretentious wanker. We now have passive encyclopedia and conceptualization XP boosts. And also plus 2 real. We can get money. Our encyclopedia chimes in quite a lot. That's good. Maybe even worth a minus 2 suggestion because we can combat that a bit. Not bad. Not bad, actually. I do want to think about another thought, but we, we'll see. I I think the skill points I have really need to go to some other stuff. Logic plus nine. Logic nine. Um, I really want to increase some things back again. And get them higher. We'll see. Um, let's... Alright. Yes, what is it? Damn, Logic 9 just puts it up to 97. I wonder if 97 must be the highest. There's probably always a chance of failure then, I reckon. I'm going to take off one piece of clothing to go to and see if it yes. changes. What is it? Yeah, there you go. Logically, I saw if the percentage would change if we even took the point down. It does not, which means 97% is the maximum that you can have, because there is always a room for failure. You don't have to. You already have. A long time ago. Imagine me going, there's always room for failure on a 97% chance and failing. I would absolutely throw myself out of the window. Um, sooner. It is the origin point of the pale. Wait, how? These thoughts formed in you somewhere in a long forgotten discussion behind the kitchen table in the evening light. Okay. Drinking coffee and smoking, 
with a friend. Sooner, it is the origin point of the pale. I was like, is this connected to the pale somewhat? Because it's weird and mysterious. Yes, I love this game. What? The swallow, it's how it starts. It's baby pale. But, but pale isn't here. We're thousands of kilometers from the edge. Which means the pale is all around us, but we can't see it. And it's starting here. That comforts her. Thousands of kilometers from the edge, medium success, that comforts her. No, look up first. We are 20 meters from the very edge. The pale is only in effect, a transition between the world and that. She looks up into the darkness under the nave, then back at you. The pale is only an effect, a transition between the world and that. Then what is that? It's nothing. No, it's less than nothing. No. It's less than less than nothing. The final rest state for reality. Imagine if all this never was. Then the pale is... Simply curdling milk. But the milk, it clearly hasn't started curdling yet. We're here and the pale is not. One day when it's larger it will be. I understand. A theory of the pale where instead of an outer ocean, it metastasizes. Like a cancer or a mold erupting in points inside the world. This is one of those places. According to this, how long? Until it starts swallowing? It's already started. Starting with sound. Cause it's, oh, cause it swallowed the sound and deleted it in that time. And that'll only expand, n not only taking sound, but matter with it. It's like a black hole in the center of this church. And information, causing data losses in the East in Selindian front. Have you considered why it's formed in a church? And also when or how it might start growing, or if it has other effects in addition to sound and data? Uh, yo, this is fascinating. An intellectual hunger fills her now, casting fear aside. <laughs> yeah, I also have a question, since we are piling them up. <laughs> How do you know this? I'm not doubting you. I'm simply curious as to how a detective of the RCM... How a detective of the RCM? I am an old soul, Kim. It didn't form in a church. The church formed around it. All the failed businesses in the doomed commercial area. All the failure in Martinez. I think I've had this thought before. That's how I know. And then conclude. All right. I think with conclude, that means we should be able to go through these in order. Let's start with number one. I didn't form. It didn't form in a church. The church formed around it. Of course. A pine wood sarcophagus. <coughs> or a, a containment facility of some kind. <coughs> built by the first settlers. Yes. Acting on an instinctual level. Or religious practices that we've forgotten. I have considered the same. The bad news is there were seven... Pinewood churches built in the first decade of provincial settlement. Did they like all form a circle around each other? Most of them were burnt down during the revolution or repurposed before during the suzerain. I'm not saying all of them have one in them, but what's the position of said churches on the map? Some of them might. A black grain hanging in the air. Half-Light coming in with a lot of these, though, by the way, which is interesting. You'd think maybe, like, shivers and stuff like that. All the failed businesses in the doomed commercial area. All the failure in Martinez. You think the presence of that puncture has somehow influenced the outcome of events here? Even, say, software development? Well, with the data loss, yeah. You'd be starting something, and you're like, ah, my hard drive is empty. She already made up her mind when she heard it. Some kind of great and uncaring force had to play a part. It wasn't only them. 
Yes, even the revolution was defeated here. I mean, a kind of entrepreneurial history, all the failed businesses and ideologies. There's something wrong here and no, we're reaching people fail on their own. What's interesting is this game clearly has a supernatural element to it in many factors, especially with the pale. There is a mystery. There is stuff that is not as we know it here. So when I got one, there's part of me, that grounded part of me that wants to be like, people do fail on their own. I agree with their statement, but in the world that we're in with what we've discovered, what we're discovering, what we've been exposed to about this world in particular, it feels like it is also more than that. There are multiple parts at play here. Even the revolution was defeated here. I mean, a kind of entrepreneurial history. I told the producers we need to go and move to a normal office building with amenities. But no, the artists like the milieu, the writers like the history. I told them. And then we have an option that I should let the people still working in there know about this. They might be affected and know it's better they don't know. Which is an, also an interesting dilemma. Because then you have to go back to Placence. And this is actually really quite fascinating. To go back to Placence and confirm with her a curse, for lack of a better term for her, is actually prevalent in Martinez. Like, the pale is affecting things around us, like the force binds all living things together. Um, you know, like, it's, it's weird that we, because we're riding this wave now, it's so easy to deny it and go, no, we're reaching, we're going to, we're going too far, but also at the same time, so easy to get swept up in all of this, these events that are supernatural in nature and go, let's go, let's ride that mysterious wave. Let's catch that Insulindian phasmid. Let's find the source of this deafening silence. Let's figure out this sexy, dark, mysterious mystery, Kim. Stuff is happening. Stuff is happening here. And we need to get to the bottom of it. I should let people still working in there know about this. They might be affected. You mean... Play Sans and the Dice Maker? There was almost no one left when we packed up. Just the Dice Maker, I don't think Placence would survive this knowledge, and no, just Placence, I don't think Neha is um, playing fair in this game. <laughs> Interesting. I think that means they would they would both if we tell them that, they might leave. So Hopefully, Placence has a closing down sale at her bookstore <laughs> and gives me that board game. Otherwise, we may even miss the chance to buy stuff. I think we've bought as much as we can except for that board game from that store, I think. And uh, we've already got dice from the dice maker. Both of them deserve to know. Then go tell them. Like, we may as well, right? We may as well put, pursue that and see what happens when we do, you know? I think I've had this thought before. That's how I know, Kim. An amateur anthropometric police officer. I'd like to say I've heard stranger things, but I'm not sure. This is a hell of a guess, however. Well worthy, I might add. Kim, that's a TV show. I'm, I'm not caught up on Stranger Things yet, but here's my prediction on how the show is going to end. Uh, the final episode, there will be a, an epilogue scene, uh, and it'll be 20 years later. And it'll be after Y2K, it'll be in the future. And Eleven will be grown up as an adult, and will be talking to her children. And um, we'll be telling them uh, a story, uh, and the kids won't believe it. They'll say it's so crazy, they'll say it's bizarre, it's impossible. And then Eleven will look right at the camera and say, I don't know. I've heard stranger things. And then the, the theme song goes Boom! And that's how it ends, okay? That's how Stranger Things ends. Come back here. Uh when it when it's over. <laughs> that's from someone who still needs to watch season three. That's my big brain. That's my big brain theory. It's gonna end with a with a title being mentioned. They're gonna say the thing. Yes. They're going to say the stranger thing. Very interesting. But I wouldn't say you know. This is a guess. One that's going to have to be proved by anthroponetic scientists. One day all the world will be like that two millimeter hole. Conclude. She falls silent. 
The wind blows in through the hole in the stained glass window. Cold and moist. Oh, we have we have a lot of thoughts. We have a lot of thoughts. I'm going to leave that out. But the rest? Some of this I can use to start to explain this to the rest of the team. Maybe I'll sound mad, but... Man, you will certainly <laughs> sound mad. One more thing. Maybe a club for anodic music isn't the worst thing you can erect around this particular point in space. That's true. You can have the, the sound battle the silence in a in a battle of time. Um, crazy. We've spent a lot of time in this church. It's very. This has been very important. Uh, but yeah, the last three episodes have been very highly focused on figuring out the church, and I can see why. I can see why. Maybe a club for anodic music isn't the worst thing you can erect around this particular point in space. Yeah, that's still insane, but then again, so am I. The club is the only thing keeping this place and the rest of reality together. Maybe it's dangerous, perhaps not. The club is the only thing keeping this place and the rest of reality together. I wouldn't go so far as to... Hardcore! Yeah! Yeah! Once the light is on in the universe, it will never go out! <laughs> On on call, waiting for that, on cue. Thank you again. Let's leave it at that, shall we? We have an anthropogenic detection to perform in this district. Right, I'll let you work in peace now. We did it! Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. So, cleaning out the rooms. Temporary research bonus, none, but a research time of five and a half hours. Okay, someone's been walking around in your dreams lately, looking for something, tidying up, rearranging, storing away all the unrealized dreams, putting old pains in boxes. The worst nightmares have settled down for a while, a spot of light on the bedroom door after the dark, the fluttering of eyelids in the spring sun, a thought that arises, only to disappear again, and yet there's a pattern emerging. Oh, I really kind of want to think about this one. I really kind of want to think about this one. We will see. We're uh, going to tell them about the two millimeter origin point of a pale in the DeLorean Church of Humanity. This might be negatively affecting the entire neighborhood, including the doomed commercial area. Yo, man. What's on your mind? Dead body, spirit entered. What is there to talk of? Okay, cool. Um, so we can talk more about this place, and now that we've spoken to a cell, we can talk about the carpentry aspect of Noid. Dead body, spirit-centered. What is there to talk to? You say that as a carpenter yourself? I don't say much anything as a carpenter anymore. They tried to make me into a reckoner and a leveler. Made me a bit <coughs> manic, you know. I regret the time I dedicated to that profession and that worker collective. I say things more as a member of the hardcore side dance community these days. You're not going to ask me how I knew? Why? You're a cop. I carry carpentry tools. It's funny that he does carry tools and it mentions that a lot. And for some reason, I never even questioned it because I was thinking about the bigger things. Uh, so, but yeah, I actually, I, yeah, I observed you and I'm a detective and I did it. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the glasswork again. I've been thinking about her. We can go back into this train, train of thought. I think this is what we said what we, we would come back to because we only went into these options and we said, oh, we're done. Let's run through these options and, and and have a discussion. She's the innocence of humanism. Humanism seems to be a pretty big deal around here. Humanism leads to eating sugar and pigs. Humanism was invented to mass produce billions of humans. Billions of humans can mass produce hundreds of billions of pigs. A symbiont circle. And many, many more tons of sugar. <laughs> she liked games. Her legacy the thing we live in isn't real life. It's a strategy for some kind of victory against a long dead opponent. But, yo, I'm only the Noid. What do I know? Yo, I'm only the Noid. But she's pretty. She invented the beauty you're feeling. She and her glass cutters and iconographers, you set the standard, all right. Then you meet it. It's effective like that. But it is also very soft of core, that so-called beauty of hers. 
Soft of core. I like it harder core. That's then it seems I like it soft because if any, it's anything but soft core, it's terrifying. Hmm, interesting. I like it harder core. Yeah. In the true life of tomorrow, every woman will be an innocence. They will wear neon headbands and leggings, and they will glow in the dark. His his uh, eyes smile enigmatically. Yeah, but like, who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? No one says Arno Van Eyck is a mass murderer. The anodic pioneer Rietveld is not a mass murderer. He is not accused of mass murder. <laughs> Likewise, no one says Jermaine Egged or Andre are mass murderers. You can live entirely outside that suspicion. Billions of people go about not being guilty of mass murder. Just not her. Just not her. All right. The resettlement programs were totally okay. I'm a big fan of resettlement programs for some reason. Are you a commie cop? <laughs> I am. Then that's why. Communism's just a bloody humanism, if you ask me. As her love all over it. He nods up. Isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? The world spirit does not have a body. It has organs. Hardcore is an organ of the world spirit. He raises his left hand. This Arno Van Eyck track is an organ. The carpentry and glass cutting that built this ass are also organs. She's a thief if you ask me. An organ thief. All innocences are. Alright, I'm done talking about her. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about something else, Noid. Oh. And then, take care, Noid. Alright, we got more out of him. Welcome back. Reaction speed. We'll come back to that. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, we still have the Savoir Faire. Hold on a second. Um... Ah, 42%, we can retry it. Pretty Goodbye. sure we can increase that again, right? So we can increase it to 58%. I think we have one. It's a plus one. I'm just, I'm just retracing things that I have already looked at before, I think. Hmm. Hmm. Why did I? Yeah, ah, oh, it's the glasses. <laughs> the, the last item on my list. All right, we can make it a 58%, a or we can. Oh yeah, because I can't, I can't level it up anymore. It's at seven. I need to take speed. I remember this, and I said we'll come back to it. Okay. Good to see you. Oh, after everything we've done in the church and how we're about to leave, let's go off on a high note. We have an even chance, a 58%, to just dance. No words. You close your eyes and dream of the shapes your body should form to bring this strange music into life. For now, such ferocity of motion is beyond you. But just imagine the moves you could pull to this futuristic beat. Puts a grin on your face just to think about it. Even a failed attempt gets the juices flowing and repairs some of the damage done by battles lost. If you up the dose and truly dance, who knows what will happen? Salvation. Goodbye, officer.
Don't tell Kim. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. Goodbye, off. Oh, um, hey, I almost had a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> I was just panicked and I'm like, wait, I forget that I need to actually take the thing. Okay, there we go. You close your eyes and vacate your skull, leaving your brain to wonder, where did that little fluttering light go? Total darkness. You sink down the darkest fathoms of your own personal deep. Vertebrate by vertebrate. Through the unformed skulls of your mind. Here it will begin. It is time to dance. Where did the church go? Uh, what happened? I, I sniffed speed, leveled up my skills, and I'm here. Where did the church go? Who fucking cares? I hate waking life. I hate this world. I hate and fear everything. All I want is to dance. Please, God, just let me dance. Good. No. Not good. Why is it that everything I say is wrong? Orgasme. <laughs> God's sake. Where did the music go? Oh, don't worry. The music's still there. It's you who is gone. No, really. Why can't I hear anything? This is a pivotal moment. Try not to piss yourself. Concentrate on hearing. Nothing. Just the immaculate silence of your spinal fluid. What Electrified. <laughs> what was that about? Unformed skulls? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Every vertebrate in your spine is an unformed skull ready to pop up and replace the old one. Like shark teeth. The one you're currently in has a little brain forming in it. Waiting for its turn. We have got a new part of our body and a new voice to accompany it. We just got a spinal cord. Spinal cord unlocked. To rule the world! God damn, okay. Oh my god, is that true? Yes, it's all true. In the spinal cord. What do you want? From what I can see, it's about to bust a move. Bust a move. Foolhardy! Do you even know what's happening on the surface? Maybe... A thousand years have passed. Huh. Or maybe you started passing out like two seconds ago. With your eyes still closed, the first thing you feel all the way back in the pivoting darkness of your own torso is warmth. You have become a triumph of rhythmoplastics somewhere in a smelly wooden church on the coast of Revachon. The wounds from the war you waged on your body are healing, twist by twist, turn by turn. <laughs> As you open your eyes, you should scream, hyper, hyper, it seems appropriate. Open your eyes and dance like you've never danced before. So either we can do this with such an intense energy of hyper, hyper, yeah, or... We can just be silent, composed, collected, and just dance like we've never danced before. If we've just completely sniffed speed, stared this man, Andre, right in the eye, said nothing, and just gone right into a dance. Hyper! Hyper! Yeah! A flesh and bone approximation of the throb coming from the speaker setup of the one called Eggheads. Entirely, rigidly, imbecile, without pity or fear. It's kind of free from self-awareness. No deliberation. Only, and I mean only, execution. We dance. We, yeah! No way! 
Yes way! Hard cop! Will is real to real mixer blasting the anthem of a future that will never come. The young man observes your moves for a second. We just have everything. Turn to a cell. What are you doing? The young woman lifts her headphones up slightly and raises her chin, looking at you expectantly. Asil, aren't you going to dance? No. Recording. No. Recording. What a buzzkill. The lead programmer throws the other young woman a knowing glance before turning her attention back to her own work. She's still at her mainframe, pressing buttons, reading printouts, but she started putting her head along to the music. Dance! Point to Andre. It's the law. Kim, get in here. Call for the lieutenant to join you. Is there anything more I can do? I want to break the limit. Kim, get in here. Call for the lieutenant to join you. What's going on here? The, the inquest. The lieutenant looks at you and the speed freaks grinding around in the church, a group of unhinged lunatics. This is clearly a Code 31 emergency. Code 31! Code 31! The lieutenant squeezes the bridge of his nose. The lights reflect off his glasses. He's obviously having trouble adjusting to this new reality. Code 31 emergency? Really? Yes, officer, in need of assistance. On the dance floor! The lieutenant crosses his arms with a bemused look. What's happening? The lieutenant is forced to yell over the futuristic music blasting from the speakers. I've become Dance, the destroyer of worlds. I have become Dance, the destroyer of worlds. Good for you. Rock on, then. Hey, I called you to dance. What? Yo, it's a legendary authority red check. 97%. Respects us. Dancing so infectious. And we also outrank him. That's it. Don't let the lieutenant leave without getting his hardcore on. Who's the one in charge? You are. Lieutenant, I am only going to pull rank on you one time, and that time is now. Are you kidding me? I assure you, I am not. Now get your groove on, Lieutenant. Get my what on? I said, get your goddamn groove on. Boogie woogie. Sheesh, okay. He backs up with his hands raised in the air, observing the crisscross of your feet. Okay, you psychopath. I see what you're doing there. It's jacked up footwork, plus some... Um, is that Ubi folk dancing? Nah, it's not Ubi folk! It's hardcore! Hardcore! Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Me in my suit, with my fucking beanie on, with the speed in my hand. You talk a big talk, Lieutenant. Let's see some moves. Oh yeah? I did 15 years in the juvenile crime unit. I can do it inappropriate. <laughs> Now, check this shit out. Yes! Yeah! The lieutenant begins to heel kick the church floor with such intensity, it's reasonable to fear. He'll kick a hole right through it, causing the floor to crack and the pillars to collapse, bringing the church roof down on all of you. It doesn't look like he gives shit either. Yes! Dance, point at Andre, it's the law. The young man immediately bounces up and down, then assumes the same dance pattern, embellishing it with some sort of waving motion. The authority of the law is clearly unquestionable. Is there anything more I can do? I want to break the limit. The dynamic motion of your flailing body is bordering on the extreme. You're going off the charts. You feel as if turning on the hyperdrive would be a point of no return. Feels almost melancholy. Are you sure you have the entire possible for this? Well, we, do we have the entire posse? Your cell's not joining in? What about no wait? Now, together, where are you? Here we go again! 
What now? This the sound up. above your what? Above my hair, man. Okay, this is too embarrassing. Excuse me. Oh, dude, we're we're in. Let's go. It's a shivers check, challenging ninety seven percent. We're on a roll. We got Kim dancing plus two. Andre's dancing harder. Sooner is in. Speed addict. Let's fucking go. Turn on the hyperdrive. Yeah. On the coast of the Martinez Inlet, in a small weather beaten slave church built three hundred and eighty years ago by settlers from the Occident, most likely to guard against an anomaly at its center. An officer of the RCM is contorting his body into idiotically rigid shapes as he invents the future of dance music. It's the hardest anyone has ever danced. What is this strange feeling I, I keep having? The cold, even now. I am La Revachelière. I am the city. Shivers, what are you doing to me right now? Where are you taking me? Uh, what do you mean? You are the city. This is throwing me off my dance groove. I am a fragment of the world spirit. The genius Loki of Rivachol. Hmm. My heart is the wind corridor. The bottom of my air is red. I have a hundred thousand luminous arms. Come morning, I carry industrial dust and let it settle on tree leaves. I shake the dust from those leaves and onto your coat. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you with her. And I've seen you without her. I've seen you on the Cresson of the hill. How are you talking to me? The modulations of my voice are noted down with thermometers and barometers. You feel me in your nostrils, on the little hairs on the back of your neck. I also reside in your lungs and vestigial organs. Everywhere, there is space. But who am I? Why are you talking to me? You are an officer of the citizen's militia, Jean Tinrebu. When you wear your coat, you wear my soul. You move through my streets freely, in motor carriages and on foot. You have access to the hidden places. You also circulate among those who are hidden. I need you. You can keep me on this earth. Be vigilant. I love you. An officer of the RCM <laughs> is lying on the floor of a small church with his eyes rolled back and his tongue lolling out. Several others are standing around him. He slowly comes to not hardcore. Had a good rest there? Uh, I spoke to the city of Revachol. Fuck yeah! I bet you did. Those were some advanced moves, man. That's all great, but we should really get going. We spent enough time doing aerobic exercise for today. Alright, let's get up. You might be imagining it, but it feels like Egghead turned the volume down. Such is his respect. Man! Now! Now, man! Now! The would-be leader stutters with excitement. Now imagine if we could do that, right? But with like a thousand people! End of human development. Mission complete. Right, Ecstatic. All right! All right! You're absolutely beat. Muscles relaxed and feet like noodles underneath. That's it for now. Goodbye, officer. Oh, we did it. Well, that was something, wasn't it? <laughs> that was truly something. Wow. 
Interesting. Okay. Well, we've done some stuff. We helped sooner with our project. I think the church is done. Egghead's standing a little bit further back. I can't move? Why can't I go over there and talk to Egghead? Come on. It won't let me talk to Egghead. What's, ha what's happening with Egghead? Hold on. Look. I'm clicking on it. It won't let me interact with him. I think his character model's glitched. It's supposed to be... here. But it ain't. That's really strange. Maybe if I leave and come back. Yes. What is it? Strange. I love that we pulled rank on Kim to get him to dance. That is absolutely brilliant. So brilliant. <laughs> Alright, we're on speed. Let's make the most of it. <laughs> Oh my god, what a day. What a day, Kim. And it's almost midnight. What a day. Very logical in there. It was such a logical time. <laughs> we want more encyclopedia so we can have more encyclopedia checks. You know how it be. How else are we going to get that passive... How else are we going to get that sweet, sweet passive checks, you know? Maybe I should also have my conceptualization jacket on for now, so I can also get some conceptualization checks in there too. Let's get this speed out of my hands. <laughs> oh man. Nice. Kim, you feeling the pull of the night time? I don't think we can talk to Placent. We can't talk to Placent or Dice Maker yet anyway, because it is 11.44. So do you know what we're going to do is... It's late. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to do some... I'm going to do some reading. I think that's, uh, that's the best course of action. We'll go... I'm going to go to my... I'm going to go to my house. I'm going to go to my room. Um... Where is that? <laughs> I've forgotten where I am. Uh, over here. This is where I'm going. Oh, hang on. Check. That's a Noland Vint Sink. An unsuccessful model. Oh, they're talking about the car wheels. Yes, this is where we are. It's getting dark. The old woman is still out here at night, and so is the mother, but the kids go away. The old woman still sits in her chair, continuing with her chores. As she does so, she quietly hums to herself. The buzz of electric lights blends together with the slow rumble of the ocean waves at night. There's a gap where the name of that song should be. You should ask her about it right now. Nice, okay. So she quietly hums to herself. There's a gap where the name of that song should be. Ask her about it. You're still up? Yes. I can't really sleep anymore. Only a few hours a night. It happens when you grow older. She sloshes the water in the bucket around for a bit. My suggestion is don't. Don't grow any older than you already are. That's old enough. What's troubling your mind? Right, and I just realized as well that we haven't done the signatures yet. Oh, I found this jacket, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? We can actually hand her the poop jacket. Oh my god. Let's go with the song first. What is this? What is the song you're humming? A lullaby my mother used to sing. I sang it to my kids too. It's an old Samaran children's song. Oh, okay. Humming a lullaby. What's it called? Surrender to the night. Wow. She replies, slowly rocking back and forth. That's kind of grim for a children's song, <laughs> even if it is a lullaby. The name is kind of grim, yeah. Sounds nice. For a child, not for an adult who has a very existentialist point of view. Surrender to the night. Sounds nice. Yes, it does. Interesting. I found this jacket, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you. 
but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Hell yeah. <laughs> no, we must run around ceaselessly. <laughs> it would be torture to stay put. We're in the worst physical condition to stay put right now because we're on speed. <laughs> I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. Rubbing his thigh. I love that that actually, that dialogue clicks and makes perfect sense, even though it's, he'll say it anyway, but I love that he's, we're saying it after we've had a full on dance sesh. We're going to lose some time on our effects of speed, but that's okay. Uh, we've got, oh, we've only got 25 minutes left of it anyway. I'll wait. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Nice, that means we're going to actually be able to wear the jacket. Merci. I'm proud of this one. Nice. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you'll have an easier life in your hands. Goodbye, I'm off. We've been on such a churchy, music-raving, churchy, night-rave club side quest over the past few episodes that we need to remember that we've also supposed to be doing work for Everart. <laughs> you know, like the main thing is like getting these signatures that we can either forge or get officially and go back over. We've, been, we've really just been getting absorbed in this area and I love how lost you can get in this game. It is, uh, it is insane. I gotta say. Look at this jacket. Phone Windbreaker. Pain Threshold and Half Light actually and just minus one drama. Element proof, always hot, sweat like a pig. This windbreaker is like a protective cocoon, placing the wearer's torso into a pocket universe where wind, water, dirt, and fire cannot harm them. Huge writing on 100% synthetic is proudly displayed on the chest. It lets absolutely no air through. Warning, item not actually fireproof. Uh, so instead of some conceptualization, we can get some half light and pain threshold and drama. And if we do that and also chuck this on, we get some volition and even more pain threshold right underneath which just gets rid of some conceptualization stuff. I can, I can do that. I can let that go. We're now we're dressed hip and cool. Oh, how much foul gear are we wearing now? We've got the gloves, we have the jacket, we have the peepo. We're putting together quite an outfit. We've almost assembled the, we just need pants and boots. I don't know if they've got brand for glasses in the neck, but maybe. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Putting the game in windowed mode is supposed to not do that sound thing. Well, at least it hasn't been ridiculously over the top. We can deal with it every now and then. Okay. Uh, in that case, it is now midnight, so I'm just going to take uh, another quick break, and then we're going to read the ledger and the badge with Kim to pass the time until we go to bed, and then it'll be day five, and then it'll be day five, so uh, maybe I'll even actually do some more discovery and exploration north before we go to bed and run around, see what we can find, we'll see how we go. Okay, we're ready to read some books and inspect some badges. Now, we actually still, uh, interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, we actually still have minutes left uh, with our drugs, even though we only had to. W we apparently waited half an hour for the uh, for the jacket. So that is that is interesting. We're going to pass the time by reading books and a badge. Uh, so we do have skill uh, two skill points. So what we're actually going to do. So I'm going to spend a skill point to unlock a new slot, and then we're going to need to internalize thoughts. Now, in terms of reading, I think the time stops when we get to 2 a.m., so I can't really get into anything that's going to be massive, and then I also have to remember the fact that, you know, there's 15 minutes, not worth it. I don't know which ones to pick. That's a problem. I don't know which ones to pick. We can pause thoughts, you know. I don't know. Um, I think that what I might do I think what I I think I'll keep all of these. I'll keep this. I'll keep that. 
Keep that. Keep that. All of these are grey. Finding better loot in locked containers is a bit of a... You know. Yeah. Uh, I think the ones that I want... And I think we've... This is our maximum. So we've got four more thoughts left. I believe. Four more thoughts left. I think the ones that I would like to do... Uh, I think cleaning out the rooms would be, is quite an interesting one. Um, a hardcore aesthetic, also. I think I might just want to do the Litany of Contact Mike just to see what happens. 15 minutes, though. We'll see. And then... I'm also thinking about either Kingdom of Conscious or this one's also very interesting, the apricot chewing gum scented one, because living in the past is, you know, we might find out more about our past. This is one that we've been eyeing up for a long time. They're all very long. That's kind of like the problem. Rigorous self-critique is also a very long one. So we've got about two hours. So I'm thinking hardcore aesthetic could be the one that we could go for because we can actually learn it in this two hours, but I mean, it, tomorrow is a new day, and time will pass, and we will learn something else, so, I don't know, I really don't know, <laughs> oh, actually, hang on, does time, it should count as time passing if we internalize a thought, and it goes to a new day, right, because it's still time passing, I don't know if that's how it works, we can, like, sleep on a thought overnight, that's actually, I don't know if we've done that yet, so that could be interesting, maybe we'll pick a longer one, Rigorous self-critique. Apricot chewing gum. Cleaning out the rooms. Cleaning out the rooms. We're going to internalize cleaning out the rooms. Okay. I want to do that. And now, we have a ledger and a badge to inspect. And maybe we can sell this production schedule filament memory for 50 real as well while we're at it. There you go. How nice. Now, uh, this will be an interact. We're finally getting into it. I've been for episodes now, for literal many episodes now, while we've been waiting for time to pass to the point where we can be late at night, I've been waiting for the chance to read and investigate some stuff. So we're going to be getting into the badge and the ledger now. So we'll find out some stuff. So let's interact with our RCM badge. Shaved, similar to how we look now, but much younger and happier. Uh, and we'll check it out with Kim. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. Now, we've already gone through all of these, but... Uh, it was mentioned to uh, show it around Kim. The man keeps so, winking by the back. Good choice. We've already done this before, so I'm just going to run through it to see if we get some Kim. Is, it looks don't be the badge in your hand. Sure. Harrier. That's long for Harry. So you are a Harry. Evrat was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Nice. Okay. There you go. So now we've got Kim uh, coming in on some information related to our badge. Harrier. That's long for Harry. So you are Harry. <laughs> So whoever told him doesn't know our full name. What kind of name is Harrier? But I don't want to be Harrier Du Bois. Don't accept the name or Harrier Du Bois. It is then. So we can actually... I think... Haven't we already accepted it though? I thought we already kind of went for that. <laughs> um, or I, should I be Tequila... Was it Tequila Sunset or Tequila Sunrise? <laughs> tequila Sun something. Can we also be known as that? That's a, what kind of a name is Harrier? It's a wartime name. Revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times. Like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide. Wow, interesting. It's meant to keep you safe. Oh, thanks, Mom. From bullets, hunger, shrapnel, kidnappings, and worse. Harrier Dubois it is, then. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. Dubois. He's not going to call you Harrier. He'll keep calling you Officer when he's angry with you, and Detective when he's not. <laughs> the badge in your hands shines as you rotate it, catching light. Nice. You see lines of information. Okay, rank? Lieutenant W. Freighter. Now here we go, so now we get to know 
What, what is a Lieutenant W Freighter? The Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a Lieutenant. Rank above Sergeant, below Captain. Wow. Okay, so I am at the tip top of field work. And W Freighter? The title of Yefreiter is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your double Yefreiter. Wow, so you get fancier field ranks when you choose not to go up to Captain. Committed to the field. You don't, you don't want a desk job. Declined. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's décomptage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. Okay. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Heavy duty case solving machine. <laughs> I thought my rank was drunk. What's a décomptage? Décomptage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein. Königstein, okay. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kings. What kings? Kings like satellite officers and the additional freighter rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. Nice. Interestingly enough, we know we are because of the badge. We know that we outrank him, even if we didn't know what it meant. That subconsciously Harry knew that he could pull rank on Kim by reading that uh, by reading the badge because we're like, I'm pulling rank on you, man. So there you go. But this is the official confirmation in dialogue as well. Wait, satellite officers? You are given the title of satellite officer if your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him. You don't seem to be a satellite. Ah, so you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior. No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you are doing good police work. Kim is a friend. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. And now we've even found your badge. There you go. So, going over that, even though we thought that being without Kim, <laughs> there is still, uh, the game sort of will automatically still proceed with the assumption that maybe Kim was there. Um, and just knows about it. He smiles encouragingly. And now we've even found your badge. So, driving your motor carriage into the sea. Because I think the game most likely would assume that he would be there with you. We were very lonely when we discovered it. He trusts you for now. Try not to spoil it. I thought my rank was drunk. Yes, uh, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past. And this leads me to believe maybe your current situation is only temporary. I won't forsake the drink. It makes me happy. Thanks. That gives me hope. I'm afraid there are no ex-alcoholics. I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. I'm just going to say thanks because we're doing okay. Says the man on speed. That gives me hope. Good. He says with a quick smile. Turn back to the document. Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic like a fly in amber. It reads. Let's have a look at the serial number. That's just the serial number. Revachol, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. The numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose, one that's unfortunately been erased from your memory. Date of issue? Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. It's an old photo, my man. The pain in your chest tells you you were working yourself to death to earn that rank. Interesting. Is it the... Is it the loss 
of the woman that we were in that just pushed Harry just so deep into only wanting to do work? Did he lose? Was he married to the job and therefore lost his relationship? Or was it the loss of his relationship that drove him even further into his work to just make him keep wanting to get these higher and higher ranks just to do something to fill that void within him leading to where we are now? You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably, yes. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you, of that you are sure. I remember that time! That was a good time. We had a good work-drink balance going. What happened, man? Pump it up! Pump it up! Yes, it's the designation of your precinct. 41. Like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor. A lot of asphalt. The 41st is... He stops. What? It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. Roberts, Feuerbach, Dimitri. Suddenly, names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. Ooh, I wonder if that means we'll be able to talk to those people tomorrow morning in uh, the Whirling and be like, I know who you fucking are. He knew all those people, although they're not from his station. They must be big. Okay, speaking of the Whirling, I also think we may have missed our chance to question um, Class J this morning, uh, this this evening, by getting, uh, by getting quite lost in the church, because she's like, Ask a little later when she has collected herself, but I think she she mentioned a time that she was available until. So I might have to. Look, we could run over there and have a look, and see if she's still smoking on that balcony. But it's past midnight, so I think we may have missed that window for today. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it. Cat. Okay, that's the badge. Very action. Very interesting with Kim. I liked that a lot. Um, I'm gonna run over to the whirling real, real, real the whirling wheel quick, uh, and uh, we'll see if um, see if we have uh, an available woman to win uh, to interview. Is full of poor things. Uh, we'll see if uh, we'll see if we have an available uh, interviewer on hand. And if not, we'll just read books. We'll just read books. We'll pass the time. Uh, we'll, we'll go to sleep. Um, we'll check in with the pawn shop tomorrow as well. It's currently open. The door's green. We gotta check in with the pawn shop because we could potentially buy a tape for Egghead. Yeah, she's asleep. She's asleep. So we've got a lot of things to do in the whirling still, because we've, we've got to confront... Do we have to confront the Union boys again, I think? I've got to figure out this guy, God damn it! Hi again, Gendarm. What is it about the way he carries himself? Which Bye -bye, is a, Gendarm. Which is a composer check, and we're no longer under the effects of speed, but I can level it up. <laughs> um, there was a thought here. The theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme. Used on everything, from pinball cabinets <coughs> to full flavor cigarettes. What are its hallmarks? Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. Wait, where do I get such a crown? It comes free with a six-pack of Vermilion Roy d'Or. The words <coughs> Roy d'Or are stamped into the crown's plastic. I'm not sure if these are... This is a... Uh, I think this is just a random thought, not a political alignment thing, because it's just what it's referencing. It's like a picture book version of the past century. Old-timey thoughts. The idea of a king in a century gone is pretty fascinating. The sentiment is called anti-centennial nostalgia, pining for a time before the turn of the century. 
It's common even now, after 50 years. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. Brota? Endurance coming in after a, a, just an innocent little encyclopedia check. Funny thing is, sounds like my stomach is growling as I am very hungry right now. I need dinner after this. Sounds like my stomach is growling. Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. This is my physical part of my body trying to get me to be bad again. The vows are blood and flesh. Blood and flesh. Fear the old blood. What is my lower intestine going on about? Lower intestine? The term is metabolic and circulatory system. Okay, but what's the hard stuff? Fascism, brother. <coughs> um... Oh... I did just do a fascist thought there. I didn't... I Now, I thought it wasn't. I was like, I don't know if this is just me getting information about something. I just did another fascist thought. Um, without even thinking about it and I've hit that's my fourth one it's funny that all the, all the times that I've done one of those has been me being like I don't know if this is a thing or not and I'm not really ta thinking about what I'm saying and then the game goes fascism <laughs> and I'm like oh I didn't know <laughs> um, so endurance is coming in asking me to be bad <laughs> comes in with uh, hey fascism Brother. Yeah, not for me. No, thank you. What is fascism, though? Many things, but it's mostly about mostly. your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Rivershaw's problems? Interesting. So what, what we're going with here is also Endurance is now putting on a specific accent for fascism, which is obviously intentional. And then we go, ah, oh, who's the... <laughs> Who's the source of Revishol's problems? I thought you were my circulatory system. Quit stalling, Bruta. We're talking about the weakest, worst, most insane thing. The weak link. Uh, finances? Yes, them. But also, women. <laughs> and the game is also going to make me now be a misogynist too. Thanks, game. Woman. Respect, woman. Women, men of woe, you don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Woo men need to go back to the fucking kitchen. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that woo men need to know their place. Incorrect. They can do whatever the fuck they want, in my opinion. Am I having some kind of stomach seizure? Stomach truth. You're having a stomach truth. I disagree. Why am I getting this? Because you've said the hard things <sighs> that others won't say. The good things, you've said them many times. Uh, Alright, I'm going to move away from this now because it's going, what if we called it traditionalism? I also think tradition is bad, so I'm just going to say, okay, stomach, I've made up my mind here. I made up my mind a long time ago. You're going to keep your vus, right? Keep your vus, Brota. Absolutely not. I'm going to be I'm not going to be played by an upset stomach. There's a slow, painful growl somewhere in your intestines, mm. knocking on your alcohol engorged liver. No, thank you. It is one of betrayal and disappointment. I'm happy to betray my gut this day. Not what I wanted. But yes, that was our fourth fascist thing. Because we, because I guess it talks about a king wanting to kick out the, you know, kick out homosexuals and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I guess by uh, playing around with the answer and going, aha, where can I get myself a crown instead of like learning more about the pinball machine that, that encyclopedia chimes in about? It goes, no, you've accidentally been a fascist. <laughs> Incorrect! Get me out of here. I didn't come in here to investigate a pinball machine and then be called a fascist you for see, it. <laughs> the door does not. <laughs> for fuck's sake. When you're just like, oh, we're just going to come in here to check things out. And also eventually do karaoke. But no, the pinball machine. 
really just have to do us like that, apparently. We can enter. So, can we also interview? Before it gets too, too late? Uh, she's just gone. She's not even here. Ooh, so she just disappears. How interesting. Unless... This door is completely barred, though. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. Physical instrument. Which, by the way, is a 5, and it's still 17%. And I think that's with our physical... Oh, hang on. Never mind. That's pain threshold. That's pain threshold. Don't mind me. Physical instrument. Do we have anything else that's physically instrumental? And also drink some alcohol before I put a point into it? Physically instrumental. Physically instrumental. I don't think so. Electrochemistry. Okay, uh, and that's another pain threshold. Okay, so we can have like three pain threshold increases. Gonna drink some alcohol for some more physique. The same small, heavy door. 28%. And then, just a reminder from last episode, is that I have to make full screen happen for me to do this. <laughs> and we keep it in windowed mode because it stops the sound glitching thing, or at least uh, takes it down a notch. The same small, heavy door. Okay. No lock in sight. I'm now going to try this at 42%, and if we fail, I can put a skill point in. To physical instrument. 42%! Kick this door in while Class J's not here. Ah. Rude. I had alcohol. God damn it, game. You kick it. Gung ho style. Entering the premises 12. style. But the door fails to respect the force. All you hear is the bar rattling inside, laughing at you. The door has withstood your demolishing attempt. There must be another way in. Below, in the union box, was there something behind the window? In the hawthorn branches, brushing against the glass. Oh, what? No one knows. It is a fleeting feeling. It could be that your eyesight is still too poor to notice it behind that window. Dude. Bent metal, broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Oh God, what am, what am I now? What is this? Where am I? What have I done? <laughs> Fucking, which path am I at now? Gaze upon me, stuff and despair. Kudos. Anti-object task force. Oh, is this because I'm kicking things. This is because I'm kicking things, isn't it? Like the mailbox, unfortunately, and the door. Take a look at your hands. See how bruised they are? See those little scars? This is Exhibit A. The material world is holding you back. Containers, mailboxes, doors, chairs. They are all your enemies. Always have been. Atoms themselves are in on the conspiracy, forming shapes and structures that you hate. You are energy, stuck in a body. You are spirit, trapped in matter. Break free! Beat up that lamppost. Let it know just how much objects suck. Minus two pain threshold. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. It automatically unlocked again. 58%. Anti-object task force. Initiate. Huh. Or we can go downstairs and check something for a potential other way through. However, I've had the alcohol. We may as well try again. Thank you, game. Thank you. Let's get this shit open. Bam! Something cracks inside. Nice. It is an unbelievably satisfying sound. Task updated. Explore the whirling secret passages. Filling you with a belief 
in your own body. Finally, I needed that one. I needed that W. Sounds like the property damage wasn't in vain, at least. Would it hurt to look in? Let's see. We did it, baby. While Colossi is not here. Ooh, there's footsteps. Footprints, I should say. Ooh. Uncover the secrets within. Find a way into the secret passage. Isn't this one the the blue door though? Strange doors in the strange doors in the whirling. Into the secret passage. Does this mean this leads to the blue door as well? Ooh, okay. Okay, if we're doing some investigative work, I'ma uh, adjust what we've got going on. Interfacing gloves. And the music coming in, I like it. Spirit to call visual calculus. Kim, I need you to wear these jackets with me. Can I pull rank on you again and break my promise about saying this was the only time I'm gonna pull rank on you to get you to wear this goddamn jacket? Do I want shivers or visual calculus? Visual calculus for now. Nah, encyclopedia can stay. Perception. Yeah. 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 Do you know what would be nice if, like, the flashlight had just, like, a passive perception increase? You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. This is, like, the perfect time to do this. I know we want to read the ledger, but also we're, be we're being e be and eing in the night. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum, from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week too. You know, officer. It could have been me. This is good. He likes it. There's a little smile there, in the dark of the workshop. Sexy dark mystery, Kim? The blue door was a mega investigation after all. Aha! It has no converge with our main investigation, which I would say is quite large. Yeah. I love that one, Kim. Which means I think that also includes the blue door because it's the the task is now uh, completed. The task is over. Okay, what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route behind our rape victims' room in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. Remember, Kim, we established. That is, was fabricated. Let's have a closer look then. Crouch and study the footprints. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Sole could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. Hmm. This print is unlike one left by a regular worker boot. It is not a brand sole with logos on it. It seems custom made or old fashioned. This print doesn't look like the odd sold print we found at the hanging, Kim. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. Uh, interesting. That doesn't. This doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, does it? No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot. This is cool. It means we'll be able to be like, all right, put your shoes up. I want to see if you've got hard, little horizontal lines for me. Let's get up. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. Let's move on. Oh, nice. Pinball makers. Oh. Pinball Maker's Coat. Empathy and hand-eye coordination. More clues. Hand-eye coordination, no description. M. Nyflox Blues. The, this dusty old coat used to belong to someone called M. Nyflox. The name is stitched into the silk lining. It smells of moths and ancient engine grease, but fits you perfectly. A strange, lonely emotion fills you when you tighten the belt around your waist. 
Empathy and hand-eye coordination. We've had some hand-eye coordination checks that would have been really nice. It's got poop on the back of it. Nice. Oh, there's a lift. It's an elevator. Ooh, there's more here. <gasps> and it is behind the blue door. It's all connected, baby. Nice. The pinball... This pinball is white tiara. The back glass shows a female figure in mourning. A note. NB. The spare key is tied to the bush. Ooh. Spare key is tied to the bush. Pinball maker was hidden Over behind there, you. in the corner. The pinball machine? Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Can you see what I'm seeing? The pinball machine. Gordy's Goats. A classic. Wait, you've played it? A little. Feels like a lot. Too much to play it again. Let's take a closer look. Pull out the machine. Ah, oh, great. Lieutenant Size. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get the game on, finger boy. Those flippers are ready. Inspect. Okay, lean closer to read the text. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, Inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The Mesk legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. Inspect the playing field. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped, which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with all the goats? Indeed. Think of them as balls. Okay. Insert coin. Let's go, baby. It takes a oh. while to get into a rhythm, but pretty soon you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. I should have put the hand-eye coordination jacket on. Go, go, finger boy. I've got an I've got interfacing gloves on. I feel sorry for the goats. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Wait, what kind of guy was he then? The kind of a guy who uses the word savages a lot when recounting his travels. A mask nationalist. A racist mountaineer? An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining hall, surrounded by wall-mounted hunting trophies from every continent. That is not cool. He also hit his wife and kids. Other people's kids too. Sometimes pets. Hateful little men. Yeah, it's a bit too far, that one. But you seem to be having fun. Uh, I'm pretty good at this. Your game is definitely improving. The jolly goats are flying all over the board. And although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. Concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths. But finally, the opportunity presents itself. One of them gets through. The words, pale rupture, light up on the speaker panel and the machine starts filling with a thick, milky fog. Something's happening. Pale rupture, oh my god. Congratulations. This is where the game ends. It's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. <laughs> what if the game ends in a pale rupture? 
considering the what we've learned in the church today with the pale is this a self-aware shot at themselves it's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players a stupid nihilistic finale are we about are we going to experience a pale rupture and real in uh in the game <laughs> there's so much fog you can barely see anything some is actually leaking out of the machine and one by one your goats start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. You're down to your last goat, going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point, but that goat is something special. Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. Bad at ball games. Is that because of the what we did with Renee? Damn. Eight percent, and it's a red check. And even if we increase our reaction speed, it's not going to increase much, dude. Kim, it can be done. Just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. You will eventually make a mistake, and then it's all over. Damn it. Why do they give up? Winning is too stressful. Why do they even make these if it's impossible to win? Why do they even make these if it's impossible to win? It's there twice. Um, ah! Alright, 8%. Stay on the ball. Reaction speed. I actually thought it would be hand-eye coordination. Funny that. I was like, this is going to be a hand-eye coordination check and I'm not wearing the jacket. That sucks. Reaction speed. Okay. Also makes sense. It's a shame our speed ran out. Stay on the ball. 8%. That's an 8% win, baby. We got a chance. Let's go. Let's do it on a high note. Oh, if you can't even see it. You know, we can't always get the wins, baby. We can't always get the 8% checks. The last goat plummets into the fog with almost suicidal glee. <laughs> it killed itself <laughs> to spite you. There goes nothing, finger boy. Damn it. Okay. We tried. How bizarre. The machine is dead and silent. It needs mm. serious maintenance before anyone can play again. Wow. Can we open this door from behind? You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. This door is connected to the one upstairs, but how do we get through? There must be a key somewhere. Probably somewhere in the whirling. It's not too important. We can get in and out using the roof door. It was related to that thought, which you cannot repeat. <laughs> it's attached somewhere this small elevator outside. It smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right, <coughs> and just enough room for two people to fit in. This elevator must have been used to transport pinball machines to and from the upstairs workshop. Look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons. Monter, the sound, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. So it was mostly pinball machines riding this elevator. Seems so, although it's pretty quaint for a freight elevator. Close the doors and go up. Nice, so you actually get to inspect the lift on the bottom instead of up here. And this is the pinball dude's little workshop. With some boot prints. And Klasia is gone. Uh, this late at night. How an interesting discovery has been has been made. Um I was clicking on the wrong thing. Maybe the key. Oh, maybe the key is what they were talking about. Um, maybe the key is what they were talking about. Um, downstairs in the Hardy Boys area. Or at that, or it's outside. Okay. Kim, we're not going to bed just yet. Or you can go to bed if you want. It's late. But also, I'm going to keep you while we read books. I'm going to read my thing. There's nothing that we can... Oh, maybe if we... Will the thought bubble pop up? Thought 
If I have my tear bag on, can I pick up any of these uh, bottles? Nope. Um, no bubbles seem to appear when I'm around here. So, we've got, we do have more stuff to do in the whirling, which is always fun and exciting. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to come back. I think something about a key... It might be over the other side of the... Oh, hang on a minute. Ooh. There's more to Weasel's place. We can go in. It's green. I know that we keep saying we're going to read the ledger, but interesting stuff just keeps popping up, like everywhere else. That has to be inspected immediately. Because what if it's too late otherwise? You know, what if a new day comes and we can't do anything? This is... This must be investigated. We can go check on the cryptozoologists? And Gary? Seemingly. It's green, and there's a bubble next to it. You hear the sound of running water. Someone's washing dishes. The door is closed again. Nothing to do here anymore. I just got bamboozled. I got so excited. I just got bamboozled! <laughs> The thought bubble really made me think like there was going to be more there. So silly. Okay, we've explored some good stuff, which is which is awesome. Uh, we've missed some things as well, failed some checks that we could have probably done, which is a shame. Uh, you can't prepare for these things, unfortunately. Um, ledger time. It's one fifty. <laughs> it's one fifty. It's ledger time, and I've got to go to bed. And I don't know what happens when we go to bed on this side of the water lock with Kim with us. Um, I assume he will just have a lonely walk home um, to the Whirling himself, I, uh, I assume. But yeah, we're going to walk uh, a walk back, take us over here, and we'll do some light reading together. Because I don't know if Kim will comment on any of the cases. I'm not sure if Kim will comment on any of the cases he might. And uh, if he does, it'll be fun. Okay. Pointing and clicking and pointing and clicking and pointing and clicking. Oh, what's... Huh. Someone ditched some speed here. This was not here before. St. Baptiste Preptide. Motorix Psych and Morale. <coughs> Different speed. This brand orange medicine bottle declares the brand name Preptide in a sunny, happy manner. Someone has lost the bottle, but who cares? This is what uh, Class J had in her medicine cabinet. Is it hers? Did she ditch it potentially when she left? Who knows? The worn and beaten wooden planks. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. He does comment on the bench. Interesting. I wonder if he would also comment on the drunks. He's back! And firstly... Tequila Sunset. Oh, there it is. Tequila Sunset. So, sorry for being a buzzkill. I'll supply the booze if you supply the story, so I can give him some more stories for booze. We're gonna do that tomorrow. We'll do that tomorrow. And then I'll get stories with Kim by my side. Okay. Kim? It's ledger reading time, baby. <laughs> Finally! God damn, how long have we been waiting to... to do this? <laughs> how long? How long have we waited to do this? How do I read the ledger again? Um, do I... Hmm. How do I... Can I... Hmm. Wait a minute. So I need to remember how to do this. Do I need to click on the icon while I have it equipped. 
Yes. Huh. No, it's grayed out. I'm clicking, but it won't let me. Okay. I have forgotten how to do the thing with the uh, ledger. Oh, I just interact with it when I'm not holding it. Of course. Is that the only thing? Yes. Interact. It's the ledger you found in the trash. Oh, okay, here we are. Incredibly cool piece of kitchen tissue is stuck to the back. Apparently, slide the hidden drawer open and smell the ledger. Let's smell it. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Yummy. Slide the hidden drawer open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. Inside, you see two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. I forgot about this. I was like, oh, hidden compartment. That's new. And then I remember that we've been here before. Two octopuses are smiling. You stare at the card, willing your hand to move. It refuses. It's slightly, ever so slightly, difficult to breathe with arson, petty theft, spousal abuse, handwritten logs on dozens of investigations. You don't okay, exactly done that. close them. Read a so case much. file. It takes about Here half we go. an hour to piece okay. one together using the system you've devised. Which one do you want? Half an hour to piece one together using the system we've devised, but the ti time stops at two, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So I, I believe if, you know, if we want to ever past the time half an hour we can we can do that but let's have a look so we've got we've already done the next world mural <laughs> the unsolvable case the square bullet hole murders the couch in an unexpected location and murder at the hookah parlor the hookah parlor the unsolvable case let's go in order aka leslie and burke aka the public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed case it has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man, and you can't lock them away because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop displaying his genitals and for Burke to stop attacking things would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability. Could we just keep them off the streets? You would think that, but you're wrong. Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? No, Leslie and Bert are on the corner of Main Street and Perdition, because that's where the action is. Can you keep yourself off the streets? Proceed. Threatening, fines, dragging them to the station. Locking them up in the hell holes they live in. Locking them up in the station. Hypnotherapy. Even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all, and still the complaints wouldn't stop, as they hadn't stopped for ten years. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? Public indecency. Good, you're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day, when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage, but the joke's on him. You're drunk out of your mind on potent Pilsner. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face, 
Then you proceed to beat him unconscious with it. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who at this point is tending to Burke. Wow. He came at us and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. Gee. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows, but both drunks are off the street. The complaints stop. The unsolvable case is solved. With physical violence in a drunken stupor. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. <laughs> the end. Do you want to read another one? Oh my god. Harrier. The square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. God, playing this game, while it is definitely a game and also an experience and also a journey and of spiritual nature and a revelation and totally something to experience for yourself and to watch and to ex enjoy and to observe, this, this is something, you know? We are all just existing at the same time that this game has been made. And I think that is truly precious. This game communicates things in such a way that I could, any time the game describes something, it is so picture perfect in my brain and it is so intensely satisfying uh, that if it is possible to physically, emotionally and mentally be in love with a video game that you would marry it I think this is the game to be wed to to go through the, the engagement process uh, the wedding ceremony the honeymoon period where you just fuck this game forever and ever and ever and then cherish it until you die until death do you part that is how I feel about Disco Elysium aptly put I think but that's all you got from the half hour you spent piecing it together all you know is the entry wound was square shaped you never found the bullet and then another body showed up also with a square hole in his forehead a sequence killer who knows those pages are missing what next the pages are missing that's always great when you want to revisit a case don't worry one day one day, you may still catch the man with the square gun. Interesting. That one's open. It's the sequel. The sequel. Square bullet hole Elysium. The couch in an unexpected location. Some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it. In the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young, and they thought they looked cool on it. It looked really cool, like a rock band. <laughs> yes, as you've said here, insufferable rock and roll assholes. Young people are the worst. So anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa, or couch, or whatever it was. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. They took it to where they also took photos of themselves on it and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee because they felt it's intellectual. Now they just need to put wheels on it and an engine. Get that shit in the air. Get that shit on the road. Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. Music to my ears. Did I ever catch those guys? No, 
You didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? The final case in the ledger. Murder at the hookah parlor. Murder. Tum tum tum. At the hookah parlor. Was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, who is now dead. Of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. Wait, how? Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Lobos gang members when him and his partner J.M., only initials mentioned, answered the call one night. It's a sad story and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Right, on with the murder. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve. Was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker, a real brain twister. Was on it for, like, a month. The captain got impatient. Shit or get off the pot, Mills. <laughs> Mills didn't get off the pot. Not yet. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more. Racking his brains, running with every theory, as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the Uka parlor. Tough case, he said. Toughest he's ever had. Wait, was Joseph Mills a good cop? No, he was awful. Awful sense of humor, too. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Oh. Really rapey. Still, oh. he'd been on it for months now. Said it was the final case said it was uncrackable. That murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. It was his life. Okay, so the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere, and you look into it. Here's the setup. A young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. Yes, I am aware of those. Low-key, I do think they're a little bit stupid. Can you get high off it? No. It's soot and water vapor. It doesn't do anything. Okay. Stupid. Yeah. So anyway, young man in his twenties found with his skull busted open. Right on the floor of the hookah parlor. In the middle of the day. No one else is in there. Only client that day. In perfect health, too. Some kind of movie producer. No one enters. No one exits. He's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning, all noon, like he usually does. He's a regular. No calls, nothing. Just sucking on the hookah until 1545. Then bam, he's dead on the floor with his skull busted open, blood everywhere. What happened? How can it be? He smoked... In, in, so intensely that his brain busted. Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. <coughs> Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. Tables low. Heavy. Really sharp edge. He sucked hookah, stood up, passed out, hit his head on the table and died? See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply, and you don't notice it until you get up to go to the bathroom. What was he doing there for six hours? Smoking hookah. Didn't you hear? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was Murder at the Hookah Parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective, and about 30 minutes has passed piecing it together. Next. 30 minutes of time that doesn't move as we've been stuck on 2.08 a.m. Uh, for a while now. So Not there we go. Has changed. Put the ledger away. We did it. We interacted completely with the ledger and finally read all the cases. So many episodes later, we finally wrapped that one up. And it's time to go to bed. It's 2 a.m. It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. So there's an option to say goodnight, Kim, send him away for the night. And this is the choice that I'm at is uh, there is the I actually feel like it's probably better for us to sleep. And then when it's a new day. Oh, man, we have we have so much to do. That's the thing. We've got we've got so much to do. Monday's task to sing karaoke still there. We're going to go to the 
we're going to go with our lovely newfound cash money, potentially get a tape from the pawn shop. Uh, we're going to run the number on the victim's armor uh, tomorrow. Um, we will ask uh, Manana about the armor. Uh, we've got another person to find about the tattoos. We've got a firearm, signatures. Have a speak to class share tomorrow uh, with time that has passed. Something about spirit being eternal. Oh! I forgot about that. Oh, get yourself organized. Attends to Bun's meeting. It just says after 10. It just says after 10. Does it have a cutoff point? I forgot about that. To get yourself organized. We're definitely not organized, are we? Hang on a minute. Let's go and check. It's 2 a.m. Bit late. I have a feeling that it's not going to be possible. But let's let's go. And then if it doesn't work, it's f for the next day, I guess. If that if it's still available to do. If not, it's because we're silly and we were not organized enough for communism, which is a huge failing on my part. What a shame. <laughs> All right, we're going back over here and we'll go and see if um, we can actually check this out. But um, yeah, like we've got a, we've got a lot of, a lot to do, a lot of tasks to check out. We've got people to talk to, phone calls to make, investigations to do, things to, things to sniff, things to smell, things to talk to, people to talk to, ourselves to talk to. You know, we've we have things to do. Now, I believe it's in here. I think is the location. Am I am I wrong or am I right? It's it's in this area, right? Uh at the Cape Side Apartments. But which but which one is it? Uh is it the communism door that we busted open? Like this one? Mm, or is it another one? It's very sm that would be very small to hold a meeting. That's the spare bathroom. This is Kuno, Kuno's dad. And we I we might not be able we might not be able to do it because it might be too late and I won't actually be able to know. Oh, it's this one, isn't it? It's going to be this door and it's grey. It's definitely got to be this door because it's the only one. All right, tomorrow it is then. <laughs> tomorrow it is. Yeah, there's no other door that's highlighted. It's got to be that. So there would be someone out there, I guess, and they'd be like waiting for a, uh, you know, someone to come and speak the, the, the words there. We were busy. We were very busy. Uh, understandably busy, I would say, you know. Figuring things out in the church. Doing important things. You can't do- you can't be everywhere at once. We'll have to get- we'll have to get organized with, uh, with communism tomorrow night if there is a meeting that is, uh, still taking place. Um, only one way to find out, and that is to attend and see if it works. So, as soon as we enter the- this, uh, the room, Kim does not come in with us. Um, we send him away for the night. You know what? It's it's hard because I kind of want to. Nah, you know you know what, Kim? I don't want you to walk home in the snow alone. I don't want you to walk home in the snow alone. I kind of feel bad about that. I'm gonna see you off. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go to bed. I'm gonna walk Kim home. I'm gonna walk Kim home, and then we'll walk to our bedroom. We'll walk to our our sleepy place. Rise and shine, comrade. It's time to get to work. This is weird. It's doing the communism thought again. Despite all the... Uh-oh. Organization hasn't exactly been your strong suit, historically speaking. Your level of personal upkeep is irrelevant. All that matters is your commitment to building the World Republic. You must seek out your revolutionary brothers and sisters, but it won't be easy. They live underground. 
These communists let your nose. Yes, we really have no idea what they're talking about. First, again, judging from the... You should begin by interrogating those. Here we go. Yeah, look, and then again, it just stays there. Really weird. When we wake up, the, the thought is still there. It's all right. We'll get organized. We'll do it. Um... Maybe I just have to talk to Kim and I can say goodnight. Um, we've got more to do in this room that we'll do um, maybe at some point, but we'll also owe money to to guard, so I don't know. Yes? I can't tell him... Oh, I c Kim, can't I just allow you to go to bed? I was, I was trying to be nice. I can't even... Okay. Fuck. I can't. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> I thought I was being nice and I was just going to walk into his room and then click on his room and then he'd go, Good night, detective. Kim has to walk home on his own. I feel bad. Alright. Well, I'm going to sleep and I think this game is amazing. And we're gonna end. Uh, we're gonna end day four. And when you end day four, what that also means is we're about to have another conversation with our uh, ancient reptilian brain and our limbic system. And you know, fucking who knows? Maybe our spinal cord at this point. But that was related to dancing. So I don't know if we'll be getting the spinal cord in the mix. But we are unquestionably aware of the spinal cord's influence on our system now. And I think that that's important to, uh, to remember. So we're going to bed. We're going to sleep. The old woman has actually it's finally gone now. And it's past it's two. Snowing. Time to call it a day. Good night, Kim. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Enter the shack. My free accommodation. I could have paid Gart. But no. Using a thermodynamic expander condenser cycle. Nice. And again, this is going to be the revolutionary thought that I don't need to do. An old mirror hanging. Because I've already done it. Okay. Are we ready for bed? On the table, you see a bowl. The water reflects back of me almost. Okay. Bedtime? Bedtime. Two in the morning. Big day. Big day. Big accomplishments. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. The church today was big, and then we've done a lot of running around since. It was a big day. Go to sleep. Let's wrap up this episode the bed with sleep. You is soft, if lumpy. Waves wash the sand underneath the hut, then grow distant to your ear. In the quiet hum of the organic heater, you fall asleep. Let's end this episode with some sleep. Like a deftly cast fishing net, sleep pulls you out of the world and into its dark shore. The rough mesh chafes. Tightening around you, it digs into your brain. Great. This is going to be really chill. How have things been going for you out there? Helped anyone lately? Saved anyone lately? Murdered anyone lately? I haven't actually murdered anyone. This bastard isn't even listening to you. Because you know you are a murderer. A disco music listening psycho killer who offs poor people. And then forgets about it. I don't care, that doesn't scare me. Hear that? You are naive to think he's afraid of his bloodied hands. Soul brother. Oh no. I see inside his amygdala and his hippocampus. The thing he's really scared of. Is much, much worse than that. What is it? Don't tell him, sister. It's too bad. Why are you doing this? I just want to sleep. I can almost see the dark. We're trying to help you. 
All these processes, these tortures, voices and tremors, are all just distractions, flares and countermeasures to keep you from the last dream. The worst of them all. The last dream? The last dream will be total annihilation. Cinders peeling off the fuselage. We won't be there to help you anymore, Harry. We will be dormant. You will be naked and alone. And another night, dreaming of her, the air will smell of apricots, her face forms in summertime. And the air will smell of apricots. Of hell. An ancient sadness, brother. Ten thousand years later, in front of the video rental, there is a warm breath on your face again. Everything is okay again. Everything is so okay. Doesn't sound like it'll be okay. Your eyelids flutter open for a moment. When you close them again, you sense the light of the room around you. You're back. In two seconds, the alarm will ring. The last thought in your head before waking is, maybe you shouldn't have seen that stained glass window in the church. Wow, open your eyes. Day five, baby. Please don't tell me this is the revolution. Rise and- Oh my god, stop! Oh, you must, but it won't. They live underground. Let your no, no. We really have no idea. First, again, judging from you should begin. Here we go. Okay, so that, that's just going to stay there. I need to do obviously the thing where I go to the meeting, and then hopefully that'll stop appearing. Seven thirty on day five. We did it. We completed day four. Massive day in the church. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Disco Elysium. It was massive. It was so much fun. Breaking down in the dance moves. This was just. Such ecstasy to experience and to witness. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode genuinely. I love you. I'll see you next time.